Hey lovely freaks and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host Amanda. And I'm Hannah. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. If you like things strange and unusual and true crime, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe or follow button. You can also head down to the description box and you'll see a link that will take you to our link tree and that'll give you access to our social media like Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. And all that jazz. Yeah. Alrighty, so we're back. Um, This will probably be posted on a Sunday. Not a Friday again. (laughs) (laughs) I think Sunday's going to be the new day for us uh, because it's just hard to post. Yeah. um, And get, you know, everything together. All that, all that stuff. So I keep having concerts on Friday. So the semester. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you know, you're at school on Thursday. So yeah. Anywho, trying to think if there's anything I need to tell you guys. I don't think so because, uh, as long as you follow our Twitter and Instagram, you should be up to date. So we're gonna jump right into it. If you saw the title, then you know what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be talking about Jack the Ripper. Now, before I even get started. There's a lot of information on Jack the Ripper, and I could be here all day. I could have done, we could have done like three parts Mm -hmm. to this. Um, But we're just going to do, we're going to basically talk about the the five um, murders that, they're called the chronological? Chronological. Something like that. (laughs) Murders. So it's like the five ones that they can definitely connect him to because they were all kind of the same. Um, But there's a few more we'll talk about. Then we'll talk about the suspects and things like that. Different suspects that they may have had. Um, So yeah. we'll just Also, I have a question. Was he ever found out? Like, was he ever um, was it not found out? Did they ever find out who Jack the River yeah. was? No. No. That's no. what I thought. I couldn't remember. No, they didn't. Um, and so a lot of people think, or a lot of people thought that he was just like a myth, like maybe the movies made him up or something like that, but mm-hmm. that's not the case either. Like, he, this really happened. So, um, now, and he really did kill prostitutes, you know, like it says in the different movies and things like that. Now, some of those movies, like n- most of those movies are not factual, Um like I, I think from hell. Have you seen that movie mm-hmm. with Johnny Depp? You never oh, seen that yeah. movie? It's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one's kind of uh, not accurate as far as who it is, but like I don't know. It's kind of accurate to the to the murders. That's for sure. So, anyways, all right, let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so eighteen eighty eight is the setting here. Whitechapel District in London. This area was well known for crime-ridden streets, poverty, things like that. Some believe that Jack only killed five women, but some also believe that maybe he killed up to 10 or 11. All these women that we're going to talk about, though, these five, um, they were prostitutes. Times were pretty hard back then, and this district was known for prostitution. And obviously... Jack the Ripper did not like prostitutes. Like, that was the one thing that everyone could agree on because most of his victims, well, all of his victims, um, were in prostitution. Was he the first guy, the first serial killer? Um. Ever recorded? God, asking me questions I didn't look up. I'm sorry. Um, (laughs) I I thought that's, I thought, I might be wrong, but I thought that was the case. But I think. There are, like, the well, first recorded serial killer, but there are yeah, the first, other like, recorded where, serial killers. I think it was the first, like, where the police were trying to figure out who it was. Yeah. Um, but probably there was somebody before him. Because, uh, you know, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Bathory, you know, the woman that yeah. had people come over and bathed in their blood and all that. Yeah. There's just been a bunch of people that have been serial killers. So, I'm, so he wasn't the first, but maybe he was the first to... Of this magnitude? Question mark. The police commissioner of this case actually resigned in at the end of this um, because he said that he couldn't catch this madman and it like drove him insane, basically. So he resigned at the end of all this. So let's get started. August 31st, 1988. All this is going to be in 1988. If it's not, I'll say, you know, different date. So just know 1988. 
I mean, 1888. Shit. I was really... <laughs> I didn't say anything because I was like, 18, what? 1888. Maybe she's talking about another part. I, uh... <laughs> even while I was doing this, I would say in my head, 1988. And I was like, that's not... It's 18. Ugh. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> when you're so used to 1900s murder. At three... Yeah. Yeah, 1980s for sure. Yeah. Um... At 3.40 a.m., a body of a young woman named Mary Ann Nichols was found. A man named Charles Cross found her while walking down Bucks Row. Like, it was a street. and she Crossing was, Bucks Row? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she was at the end of it. Um, uh, Paul was also another man that was with him, and he discovered her as well. Like, they were kind of, I guess they were kind of... Not together, but they were crossing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> when the police arrived, Mary was on her back and her throat had been slashed and she had been disemboweled. Mm-hmm. They determined that she had only been dead for about 30 minutes. So, not long. Which mm-hmm. means that the killer was still on the streets. And I'm not completely sure how they knew she was dead that long. Like, I don't know what the procedure was for time of death back then so don't ask me that um not sure but if she really was dead at that time and it was really only 30 minutes that means that he was pretty quick in doing what he was doing yeah well i guess that the body was still warm they could determine that probably yeah september 8th 1888 i said it right that time 6 a.m <laughs> annie chapman was found on 29 29- Hanbury Street. She was discovered by John Davis, an older man in the area. He, um, the murder, this murder escalated, escalated, escalated quickly because her throat was slashed, but he cut open her womb. Sections from her stomach had been placed on her shoulders. And The autopsy revealed later that she was missing a bladder, uterus, and some of her vagina was missing as well. It had been removed. That is weird. Do you think maybe he's a uh, cannibal? So, some people think maybe he was because he did remove body parts. By the way, this is going to get graphic, um, if you don't know. Yeah. I mean, Jack the Ripper's pretty graphic, so I can't, like, you know, not say, yeah, what's going to happen. But, anyways... Um, yeah, so some people think maybe he was uh, a cannibal because he did take body parts. He liked taking kidneys, and we'll get into that. So the doctors performing the autopsy also believed this killer was a doctor because of the medical knowledge he would have had to remove everything Mm -hmm. so precisely. Mm -hmm. There was a media frenzy after this, obviously, and everyone was talking like, Sending in letters to the police, talking to the police, telling them, like, you know. um, Like, they're scared to go out in the middle of the night. Like, what are we supposed to do? like, trying to help. Like, giving descriptions of maybe somebody they would have seen or something like that. Yeah, because I bet they didn't have any kind of profiling or anything. So, they were just. That would suck. Because we have so much knowledge now. They didn't have any kind of knowledge back then. No. Mm -mm. So... Um, some letters that were sent in were, you know, obviously people being like, I'm the killer, but they had no proof to back it up. However, there were three letters that were sent in that prompted the police to believe that Jack the Ripper really did send these. The first letter was Dear Boss. The next one was Saucy Jackie. And the last one was From Hell. Hmm. September 27th. One of the central news agencies received a letter, and it was the Dear Boss letter. And let me read the letter to you. All right, so it says, quote, Dear Boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they looked so clever and talked about being on the right track. That joke about leather apron gave me real fits. I am down down on whores and I shan't quite I shan't quite quit Jesus I shan't quit ripping them till I do get buckled grand work that job was I gave that lady no time to squeal how can they catch me now I love my work and I want to start again 
You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in a ginger beer bottle to use to write this letter, but it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink will have to do instead because the original letter is in red ink. Mm-hmm. In case you're wondering what that meant. The next job I shall the next job I do, I shall clip the lady's ear off and send the police officer just for jolly wouldn't you. Keep this letter back till I do a bit more work, then give it out straight. My knife's so nice and sharp. I want to get to work right away if I get the chance. Good luck, yours truly, Jack the Ripper. P.S. Don't mind, don't, don't mind me giving the trade name. Wasn't good enough to post this before I got all the red ink off my hands. Curse it, curse it, no luck yet. They say I'm a doctor now, (laughs) haha. So basically, he gave his, He's the one that came up with the name Jack the Ripper. He's an Edgar Allan Clever Poe. little guy. Um, yeah. And also, like, he says that he's going to, his next victim, he's going to clip her ear off and send it to the police. Mm-hmm. And then also, he says in there, like, he was going to use basically her blood or the other victim's blood to um, write the letter. But he doesn't. He uses red ink instead. Just trying to. Get all that in there for you guys if you couldn't grasp it. Um, but yeah, he's obviously a poet. And I bet he knows it. Uh-huh. All right. On September <laughs> on September 30th, three days after the letter was sent, um, Elizabeth Stride's body was found near Burnin, Burn, Burnin, Burner? Burner Street. Louis... I can't say that last name. Demiskitsy something. Found her body around 1 a.m. So if you haven't noticed a common trend here. uh, One body was found about 6 a.m. Another one was found at like 1 a.m. And then this one was found at 3 a.m. So it's obviously late at night. Yeah. Um, And he, well, late at night. Like almost in the morning time. So, you know, he's, I mean, I'm no these prostitutes probably stayed on the streets, but he's putting in the work. Um, she had a single clear cut across her neck, and police believed maybe he didn't do this because um, he on- like she only had a slit across her neck, and it wasn't brutal. So they thought either it wasn't him, or he just didn't have enough time to finish because some maybe maybe somebody saw him. Mm-hmm. So then this is on. This street, right? Um, what street did I say it was on? Burner Street. Burner, yeah. So, 45 minutes after the police are, like, looking at this body, they get a, I don't know how they did it back then, um, a bell ring? I don't know. Um, <laughs> holler down the street. Oh, another body. Um, they found another body down the street. Like, hmm. probably five minutes down the street. It wasn't, it wasn't far. Mm-hmm. Um, And this was Catherine Edda's. Her body was mutilated. Her throat was cut from ear to ear. Her abdomen was ripped open with a long cut, like, down from her, like, chest. I mean, from her um, sternum all the way down to her, like, vagina area. Mm. Her uterus and left kidney were removed. She had cuts on her face, um, like, all over her face. And she also had a cut, like a nick, on her ear. Which, if you remember the Dear Boss letter, he said that he was going to cut off the lady's ear. But maybe he got, like, interrupted and he could only, like, nick it or something like that. The thing is, is, like, how is he doing all this in a short amount of time, like, out, like, where everyone can see him? It's like, well, he could have. I mean, this was... What did I say? Was it 3 o'clock in the morning? Or was it 6? What time? 6 o'clock. It was 1 a.m. Oh, 1 a.m. Damn. Yeah. So, I mean... Damn, I don't know. Because if he... If if she gets found at 1 a.m. And her throat's mm-hmm. cut. And he... Do you think maybe he's taking those bodies? He couldn't go 
and like, no, because he's not. Ta- you mean putting him there from a different spot? Well, if he's like being like, "Hey, I want some services," then he takes him somewhere. Then he does all that stuff to them and then puts him back. No, because all the blood and everything was there, mm-hmm. and okay. that like you know you could tell that that person, these ladies were murdered where they were. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Anyways, so a little bit further down the street, like not too far from where they were, where they found Catherine. They found Catherine's apron, like a piece of her apron. Above it on the wall was written in chalk, and it said, quote, The Jews are the men that will not be blamed for nothing, end quote. So, a lot of people think, could he have written that, or could it have just have already been there? Because this was during the time of, like, really anti-Semitic culture and things like that. So... A lot of people were like, oh, it's the Jews. But, I mean, that didn't prove anything. You know what I mean? So, um, nevertheless, since the apron piece was found on that street, that means that at some point he walked past police. And also, this um, had them believing that he lived in the area because he was able to blend in. Excuse me. Um. So, yeah, he had to, the way the road, the way the street was set up, like, here's where she was, about five minute walk west was where the other body was, and then the apron piece was down here. So, it was kind of like a triangle that he walked, Mm -hmm. and he had to have walked past, like, police. There was a lot of commotion going on. I mean, there was two dead bodies in the streets. This wasn't like people were just... Yeah. You know, in their houses. This was also around 1 o'clock. So, the streets were still busy. I mean, people back then and in this area didn't go to bed till the sun came up. So, yeah, he was ballsy. Now, the second letter appears to the police. Well, it's not a letter, but it's a postcard. And it's the um, Saucy Saucy Jackie postcard. I'll read that. So, it says, quote, I was not cotting, dear old boss, when I gave you the tip. You'll hear about Saucy Jackie's work tomorrow. Double event this time. Number one sequeled a bit. Oops, I'm a dumbass. Number one squealed a bit. Squealed a bit. I suck at reading, guys. Um, (laughs) It couldn't finish straight off. Had not the time to get Ears for police. Thanks for keeping last letter back until the work was done. Jack the it's Ripper. It's hard to read because he's... Yeah, it is it is also hard to read because... Yeah. Um, Edgar Allan, Allan Poe. So there's a rumor that the postcard was sent actually the night after the murders, but the papers... And no one, like, no one knew this. Like, it was sent to the papers. But they held it back. Like, the people held it back and the papers held it back. Mm-hmm. Um, if this is true, then that is for sure Jack the Ripper because no one knew that there was a double homicide except for the people in the streets. But that's not everybody. I mean, that's only, like, maybe 30 people at the most. So, it definitely shows that he, he knew about the dom- double homicide, but nobody else would have. Like, the whole town didn't know, so it couldn't have been a... Uh, like a hoax or anything like that. Mm-hmm. The the second the postcard. So mid October, the police start searching every home in the area. Spending a week doing this, they found nothing, obviously. And they spent like they searched every home to try to like see if they could find you know knives or whatever or whatever they think he might have used bloody clothes things like that, or the body parts that he took. George Lusk received a letter on October 16th, still in 1888. It was the letter from hell. It was the from hell letter. George was the leader of the Whitechapel Vigilance Committee. They were like men that assisted the police, like helped them catch different criminals and things like that. So... (laughs) The cat. So, um, I'll read the from hell thing. It's really weird. So, I, I don't... Just bear with me. Um, quote, from hell, Mr. Lusk, sore? 
I send you half the kidney. Mm -hmm. It's spelled weird. Kidney I took from one woman. Preserved. preserved it it that spelled weird too for you something piece i fried and ate it with a very nice i may send you the bloody knife that took it out anyways you only wait wait what? a while longer a long, dude wow. you're spelling yeah so <laughs> with the um the letter there was also a box and it did have a human kidney in it now believe it or not this famous letter that like this is like one of the letters that everybody knows and everybody's like oh my god you know that's a crazy letter and then the from hell movie mm -hmm. you know that i'm pretty sure that was probably made from this um so this letter was actually a prank by a medical student so uh, the kidney was not a real it was a real kidney but it was a it was a medical like kidney you mm -hmm. know and so yeah this is not a real I letter I was wondering because he I mean he didn't really misspell words that in the much. other two yeah, yeah but it in was this more one, poetic this one wasn't as poetic no and, and the stuff. words were like weird like written yeah. weird all over the place like kidney was spelled what was it K-I- it was K I D N E. And there was W A T E. Yeah, W A T Y. Well, I guess what? Well, I guess or it was something. what? So on November 9th, so we went from August to November, the fifth and final body was found. Mary Jane Kelly. Um, this is going to get way worse. This is the last one, and viewer discretion is advised. So <laughs> her body was found laying on a bed. And it, I wasn't laughing at the death. I was laughing at what I said. Her body was found laying on the bed in one of her tiny rooms that she had lived in. In Miller's Court at about 10.45 a.m. She had been extensively mutilated and disemboweled. Her face was mutilated beyond recognition. Her throat was cut down to her spine. Stomach almost completely emptied. Of organs, her uterus, kidneys, and one breast were placed underneath her head. Her body parts were all over the room, like there was a thigh on the table. There was a like he cut off like a slab of her thigh, um, and other pieces of her body were all over. Her heart was missing from the crime scene, um, and that's pretty much it. And then her body was like just flayed open. Now, like I said, most believe there were actually 11 murders. So, we're going to go we're going to go back for just a second and we'll talk about just one other person. This was on August 7th, so this is before the first fifth five chronicles. Um, her name was Martha Tabron, whose body was found at a staircase in George Yard uh, yard. She had been stabbed 39 times she had wounds everywhere from her throat lungs liver spleen stomach breast heart vagina the murder later was linked to jack the ripper but they think that maybe like been where he started and then there was another woman that was just stabbed like that um so it didn't match the slitting of the throat and the disembowels and stuff like that what the, these five had um so they thought that it wasn't him. Now, that's not to say that there wasn't a lot of murders going on in this time period. Because, I mean, I'm sure there were, you know, women getting stabbed. Men getting stabbed. So, they had a lot of work to do. Um, so, some people say that they saw him. That they saw Jack, Jack the Ripper. Uh, and a rough outline was made up. And this is what we've got from the rough outline. It says he was between 25 to 35 years old. About five foot to five foot seven, stocky build, fair complexion, with a mustache, and he seemed to always be wearing a black overcoat and a black hat. Some said he seemed like he was a normal person and couldn't be capable of this type of cruelty. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, so that's a pretty good description, I would think. Yeah. Um, he was wearing, you know. 
He's got that black overcoat and that top hat. Yeah. <laughs> so this is people that have seen him? People that think that they've seen him, yeah. So some people even, like, I don't know if this is a rumor or if this is true. Some people say that, like, I guess it's kind of like a legend or something that he was, they would catch him in the moment and, you know, he would be down there cutting open somebody and they'd be like, hey, and then he'd what you doing? jump up and run off or yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, so, and as I, like we talked about, if, if he was like with the murders, the double murder, so mm-hmm. he had to have been killing the second Catherine right after he finished with the other one. I'm not sure. So, yeah, I mean, somebody could have seen him for sure. Mm-hmm. And I guess maybe people just, like, if they saw somebody that maybe was out of place or something like that. So, anyways, in 1903, so now we've traveled to 1903. It's not 1888 anymore, so it's a pretty pretty long time. Um, Sir Melville McIntyn, I suck at names. Uh, the head of the criminal investigation said he knew that Jack had basic anatomy. And not. Oh my God. Anatomy? I just had a stroke. <laughs> Is that what that says? <laughs> Hold on. I'm trying to read. Anatomy. Anatomy. Oh. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> had basic anatomy knowledge. I couldn't read your handwriting. So and like, could, anatomy? Could be a doctor. Yeah. Um, I was trying to say I knew the word, but it wasn't coming out. As we stated before, many people thought that Jack was a doctor because of his, you know, knowledge of removing the organs and things like that. So, this guy said that he definitely thought he was. Now, he came up with three suspects. And we're going to go through these suspects and the names and why they may have been the murderer. Or why they may have been Jack. The first suspect was Montague Johnson Pruitt. (laughs) I said that name right. Um, he may have had an uncle or cousin that was a doctor. I don't know why he said he may have. Like, how would you, wouldn't you know that? I don't understand. Um, he he may have also had an attraction to being a doctor like his cousin. He possibly lived in Whitechapel area with his cousin or his mother. See, there's just a lot of maybes. Uh, Yeah, that's weird. I'm just like, why wouldn't you just say yes? Like, Okay. He's he trying also, to be suspicious. He's yeah. like, maybe I do, maybe I do. Mm-hmm. He also had notes written about um, how he thought he was going insane. Some of his family thought that he was the murderer as well. Mm-hmm. What's crazy is he died about four weeks after the last murder, murder mm-hmm. in December 3rd, 1888. So... Not really. I mean, just because his some of his family may have been doctors. Maybe he was like, saying maybe because he was scared that he was going to get killed, and then he was. Well, he was going insane, but I think it was oh. just. Well, everybody went insane back then. I think depression was probably like you're going insane. Yeah, like you know what probably. I mean. So I don't really um, know. You know. You feel sad all the time. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anxiety. God, you must be going insane. Schizophrenia. Okay. No, but anyways. Um, So, suspect number two was a Russian doctor and a criminal named Michael Ostrog. He was in an insane asylum once um, for homicide tendencies. And he couldn't give a good alibi for where he was during the murders. This was not enough evidence, though, to convict him. Which is so weird to me. Uh, what What is homicide tendencies? Is that like... Yeah. Being somewhere, being like, oh, I'm going to fucking kill you. And then you don't. Like, because if he got an insane asylum for that, shit. Crazy, but I know damn. a lot of people that need to be going into a insane asylum. Sorry for the long pause. I had a drink. Um, <laughs> I'm just so, petting a cat and I looked over and I was like, wait, <laughs> what are you doing? There's no words. <laughs> Speak. Say something. Um, so our third suspect is Aaron... Kazimitsky. He was a Jewish man who lived in Whitechapel. He also spent some time in an insane asylum in 1989. I mean, 1889. God, I always say 19. In 1889, um, this is like 
after the five murders. Mm-hmm. He died there in eight in nineteen nineteen. God, these names. I mean, these Dates. years. He hated prostitutes. He hated prostitution, and he also said that he looked like a lot of people said that he looked like the description of the man that everybody described. Now, the last five years or so, they thought that Kaminsky um, was definitely the killer. They tested the blood of the apron. They thought that it was Catherine Eddowes that they found. On um, They tested it on one of her descendants. Um, this is like later. They tested this. And I don't know how much later. Don't quote me on that. But it was later. Much later. Um, however, to make a long story short. So they got his DNA from some of his ancestors. And her mm-hmm. DNA from some of her ancestors. And they tested all this shit together. And at first, this doctor was like, oh, it's only a, it's only like a 90% chance that this, um. Dude was the killer? Mutation, this rare mutation was found and he's definitely the killer. Because I think there was even like some semen on it. But, come to find out, he did his test wrong. And the rare mutation that he found, actually 99% of all European people during that time have that same mutation. So, it literally could have been anybody in Europe. Mm -hmm. So, that proved absolutely nothing. Um, So, yeah. And Kaminsky was basically not the man. He may have hated prostitutes, but I don't mean he killed them. Now, some people believe that Jack the Ripper was actually a female um, because he could, you know, she could easily blend in with the crowd. And who the hell would think that, you know, she's... She that's never, why the girls would trust her. Yeah, you know? the girls would trust her. She never, um, if it was a female, she would have never have had to move a body. And everything she did was right there. There yeah. was no signs of sexual assault. So, it's not like... You know, if it was a... If it was a customer, you would think that they would do something. And then he would kill them. Yeah. Maybe. Unless he's impotent. Or unless he doesn't... You know, he just hates women in general. He could have mommy issues. Probably. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. It feels like he's got mommy issues. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So... Barnett is another man that some people think that was the killer. This is Mary Kelly's roommate. So many ripperologists. <laughs> can you guess what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Ripperologists are people that are like obsessed with Jack the Ripper, Ripper. solving the case and all that. Um, that's not me. I'm not obsessed with him. <laughs> this happened lo- way too long ago for me to. Yeah, there's not Try a lot to figure of things it out. that you can do yeah. as well. So, they talk about why the, um, like, ripperologists think the that it was him because there were clothes on the bed, like, folded. Mm. It almost looked like she was asleep. And if the door was locked, like, how did anybody get in? But the door may not have been locked. We have no idea. So, they think maybe it was the roommate because the roommate, Barnett... He hated her being a prostitute. He was in love with her. He didn't want her to go mm-hmm. out and do that. He tried to get her to stop, but she wouldn't. Um, maybe, so maybe during that's... all this, they just connected it to Jack the Ripper. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why he killed her. Like, maybe he killed some of her prostitution friends to try to get her to stop. Or killed women in general because he was trying to be like, see, it's dangerous out there. <laughs> that's intense, though. Um, so, anyways, that's just one of the theories. Now, another theory is James... Maybrick. This one, I was invested when I saw it and read it. And I was like, he could be it. But then it tore me down. So, I'll explain. James Maybrick is another person that ripperologists believe could be the killer. His death was around the same time the murder stopped. He was an upperclassman and a cotton merchant. Now, this theory makes some um, mad because... They think, like, he didn't live in Whitechapel and 
Jack the Ripper did, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, Because keep in mind, all these murders, I don't know if I mentioned this, but all these murders were during the weekend. So Hmm. anybody could have been there. I mean, Hmm. if it was, it could have been. How long did it last? Just the weekend? Well, these murders, like, what? No. So, no, like, these murders, oh, from August to November. Oh, okay. But every time it was a murder, it was during the weekend. Oh. So any mm-hmm. of the upperclassmen yeah, that could have worked could have very well come and visited during the weekend. Yeah. He lived in Liverpool, though, so it's pretty far away, but, I mean, still. There was a diary reportedly found under the floorboards of his estate. The diary, when found, had some um, shocking evidence in it. It said, quote, I give my name that all know of me. So history do tell what love can do to a gentleman born. End quote. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper. Hmm. Yeah. The diary also reportedly had intimate details of the killings. There were scientific tests done on the diary, and it does appear to match the error of the killings, like late 18... 18- 1800s. It was discovered by a scrap metal dealer who claimed later he did make up the diary. But then later on he said, I didn't make up the diary. It was weird. He was like, he said he lied about making it up because he didn't want the publicity. But then he came out saying, no, 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 it's real. It's real. Sorry. I just didn't want, I just didn't want all the news attention. And I'm just like, "Eh, that's weird. That's a little fishy. Yeah. Um, so oh, and I did get it. I, was I like, know, yeah. yeah, that's him. And then after that, straight up. So also, um, how he found it was kind of sketchy. Like, you're a scrap metal dealer, and you were in this house renovating it, and you found it on the floorboards. Like, what? Some yeah. some reports said that somebody gave it to him. Other reports said that he found it. I don't know. It was all but over But, I the mean, place. how could he... If they tested it, it was really from the 1800s during that era. How could they have tested well, it? Well, I mean, he could have fake. found an old-ass diary and just wrote that shit in there. That's true. <laughs> um, there was also a pocket watch found that was believed to be Jack the Ripper's. And along with um, an inscription of the five women's initials on the back of it... And it said, I am Jack. And then also on the bottom, it was engraved and it said Maybrick. It had Maybrick's name on the bottom. It just said Maybrick. Um, However, the watch seemed to have been dated all the way back to 1846. So, not 1888. So, the fact that there's in script, the fact that those initials of the women were on there kind of seems sketchy. Like somebody could have done that later. Even though the watch was. Made in 1846. The murders didn't happen until 1888. Hmm. So anybody could have found the watch later and then wrote all that stuff on the back. Yeah. Um, but no one knows whether it was, you know, Maybrick or, or not. There's still a lot of people that think that it was. A lot of ripperologists think that it was Maybrick. For sure. Like the diary. If you believe the guy that he found it in his estate... Um, the pocket watch with Maybrick's name on it, if you believe that it was engraved. But why the hell? I feel like Jack the Ripper wouldn't do that. He wouldn't be that sloppy to like engrave his name. And if it was Maybrick, well, he unless was he sending, knew he was he dying, was sending <laughs> letters to the police. So he, we can't say that he wasn't cocky. Yeah, that's true. But like. He Unless could have Maybrick. enough confidence to the fact that he's like, I'm not going to get caught, whatever. Yeah. And if it was Maybrick, maybe he knew he was, like, dying or something. Because I didn't find out what he died of. But if he knew he was dying or something like that, maybe he engraved it on the back of his pocket watch. Yeah. I don't know. So, half of the people that um, they believed were the men died fairly shortly after the murder stopped. Mm-hmm. Or the, the latest one that died that they thought maybe was a suspect was... 1919. He died in the insane asylum. But he went into the insane asylum a year after you know, it was that the guy that went to the insane asylum. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? What are you guys' thoughts? What do you think? Who do you think did it? I Could have been you. none of these people. Could have been a woman. I'm going to go with a the woman theory. Because that's pretty... Well, 
I don't know. I've always thought, like, a lot of people do think it's a woman just because she could dress like a man in a man. top hoat and a cat. Top hoat? A the top hoat. <laughs> and a top hoot. <laughs> and it's, I am struggling today. Top hoot. It's because I hadn't had any coffee. I haven't it's had coffee like either, yeah. It's three o'clock. Um, <laughs> we're both like, oh, God. Um, we so might yeah. be addicted. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> um, so, anyways, what are you guys' thoughts? Who do you think did it? Who do you think Jack the Ripper is? Could be none of these people we mentioned. There's a shit ton of theories out there. Like I said, if I wanted to be here all day or make three parts of this or four, I mean, we could have definitely went down that rabbit hole. But a I'm whole not. documentary. We could, oh yeah, we could have done a whole damn documentary. That would have been like a. That would have been like okay, we're stopping for like a month, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, which I actually did think about doing it. Like I thought about doing part one and then taking a break and doing like something else and then going back part to two. part two. But mm. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to make it short and sweet for you, lovelies, so that way y'all can uh, have a little bit of info of too, about Jack yeah. the Ripper um, and make up your own mind. So give us some of your theories on who it is. If you're a Ripperologist, let us know in the comments. Um, also, you need to go uh, like our podcast and subscribe and rate us. And if you do give us a rating on like Apple iTunes or something like that, please write something because I think we got like a one star and whoever that was, oh, what a douche. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what your problem was with, with us because you didn't say. So, um... You know, you'll never get that fixed. Uh, so there's that. So yeah. I don't know. It could have been one of your exes, though. Could have been. <laughs> really could have been. <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah, your exes are messing it up for us. <laughs> um, so anyways, but yeah. So go, go do all that for us. And then also follow us on Twitter because we do a lot of polls there on what we're going to do next. That's how we did Jack the Ripper because everybody wanted Jack the Ripper. It was between that and H.H. H. Holmes, which I really wanted to do H.H. H. Holmes, but nobody wanted it. Only like two people. It's lame. <laughs> but that's okay. It's probably because a lot of people have done that. Yeah. Um, so go follow us on Twitter. That's where you'll see all our stuff. Also, we're going to start a Patreon page. I know I've said that a million times in the past, but we really are going to do it. We're just having, we're, we're struggling on what we're going to offer because offering extra episodes right now might be a problem. We might could do like one a month for yeah. a certain price. Um, and then we don't have any merch or anything like that. And we're or just in the, tweet us and see what y'all want from us. Yeah, Maybe we're in we'll the works of trying to figure out the merch situation but um definitely tweet us and let us know what you guys would be interested in us offering different tiers and stuff like that or what what you guys would like to see um but yeah other than that we will see you guys next time bye, bye.